Hello and welcome to a mini mailbag-ish, special-ish episode. Ish. Ish. Uh, we've we had, don't know what this is. We, we don't just know don't even is. know. We, we, we don't we, know what it is. We, we're diving in with you uh, in an adventure of exploration, intrigue, and possibly uh, romance. And, yeah, and romance. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to <laughs> classify this one. We I just, think we're it, probably going to be horror, if anything. <laughs> horror. Do you mean? If, if, we're, if we're looking for a genre of the mailbag, well, I, I can tell you that the genre specifically seems to be bad dating stories. Um, right. I put a call out on the previous mailbag about bad dates. If you've had a bad date, let me know. And let me Don't tell it, you something. It is so fascinating. There's an overwhelming response, I would say. Well, I, I think everybody's uh, had that experience, right? Everybody's had well, apparently. probably a bad date. Or two. I have never had a bad date. But I ha also haven't had many dates. I'm the, I'm in the exact same boat. We're I'm lucky. Exact I, same I always boat. say yeah. I'm very lucky. I met Mrs. F very young, didn't yes. make many mistakes, and somehow no. she just ended up marrying me. Job done. Yes, done yeah, that part. I've, I've obviously been dating lately. I haven't had any bad dates, which but I would love to tell you if I did. But that's that might be because I'm too picky. You know, right. maybe I should just start going on. Going you haven't had. Anyone. You've had a couple of dates, and none of them have been bad. Hmm. That's one yeah. side of the story. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see From what the judge. Let's see if they've written in. They've yeah. been great. Yeah, I, I went on a terrible day. Oh, oh no, Lebanese where's child. this going? <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's try, dive in. This is from Kevin. Hello, tri Trifles, Wisconsinite here with some oh, bad gosh. dating stories that happened to some close friends of mine that I will keep short and not so sweet. First of all, thank you, Kevin, for not bringing up. Previous episodes, we talked yeah. about Wisconsin negatively. He, he just said Wisconsinite here. Yeah. Just, 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 Good to know, know some of you are out there still. Mm. We haven't all moved away after our, our yeah, bad review. Yeah, there hasn't been a big exodus or, uh, you know, just a, a, a slight migration. Indeed. This is, people. by the way, not an invitation to send more Wisconsin emails. Also, I don't know why he can't just say, Hi, Triforce. Here with some bad dating stories. Wisconsinites always have to identify themselves. Well, they're on the radar now, well, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. so the first story I was unfortunately present to witness. A lady friend of my girlfriend brought a dude over who she got on a single date with. It went well, so she brought him to meet us at a small gathering we were having with alcohol involved. He seemed pretty awkward for the majority of it, but very clingy to her. Eventually, someone started playing karaoke videos on the TV, and he was sufficiently drunk the dude got up and sang the song from Frozen where Anna and the evil prince guy fall in love to my friend. I recall towards the end of this him getting down on one knee and saying he loves her. The silence oh was my deafening. God. And she sort of laughs him off and most of us ignore him for the rest of the night. I believe he may have also taken out a switchblade at one point to show us. But my memory is pretty <laughs> hazy at that point. Jesus. Needless to say, he was never heard from again by any of us. So they're married now. That's oh, shocking. No. Happily married, yeah. Uh, second story is from a gay friend of mine with a sufficiently older man he met on Grinder. I believe it was a 14 year age difference, with my friend being 20 at the time. If you recall the episode where Pyrian gave a gay slang quiz to Lewis and Sips, I do. I do. Then you'll know what I mean when I say my friend is an otter and the older man was for sure a chicken hawk. Long story short, they hooked up a few times, and on one of these occasions, my friend ventured into the bathroom of this guy's house. I noticed some pills on the counter. My friend, being a pharmacy student, immediately recognized them as STD medication. He was not thrilled, although apparently this didn't stop him from hooking up again in the future anyway. Uh, All right. I wow. guess that's a date. We could clear it, clear it up, I guess. Most, most of them can be cleared up. Sure. Yeah, not AIDS. Well, no, I mean, but that's, a, that's an extreme case. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. I'm talking about, you know, your, your clear upable ones. Yeah. <laughs> talking about the, yeah, the yeah. lesser ones. I don't want to mention any of them. No, I, well, I don't want to bring the tone down, you know, like we're already, we're already treading the line there. So. Yeah. yeah. It's already hard when you're seeing someone, right? Because you are scared about that in the back of your mind, right? You have to be safe out there, everyone. Yeah. It's always awkward as well. To Is talk this something about that's, uh, that you're thinking about? A lot, do you find? Um, with Not your... a lot, but it's like, it's definitely, some, I can imagine it being like, oh, just fuck it, I'm just going to be celibate for the rest of my life, do you know what I mean? You hear yeah. about like, do you know, it's one of those things, isn't it, where you're like, some people are gross and they, they've they got gross illnesses and they're gross anyway, I'm just, I'm just going to sit in my fucking apartment and just watch porn. I think, I mean, yeah, like, instead, I think the, the scary like, thing for me is I know, I know that I'm a complete idiot and I would definitely just take a stupid gamble because I was horny and drunk and, and just go for it and then immediately catch something terrible. Like, I, I don't trust myself to make good decisions uh, in that regard. So I, I think avoiding STDs on, on the dating scene would actually be a big problem. And I, I would I would really have to work at it because I'm a fool. So, I, you know, some girls there, she's like, take me, period. And I'll be like, oh, 
Uh, well, here's my take. A million red flags, and you know she's weeping sores like a like a like a plague victim. Go on. <laughs> you could. The take is, it's it's never going to be romantic to say you know we should be tested for for these things, right? But yeah. I think you have you have to wear protection until you have to. But for both of you, until you can both get tested together, or at least like not to, not not together, but you know at the same time. Because I think then like that that opens up that opens up intimacy after that right and comfort after yeah. that yeah do, do you know what they need is like a vending machine just in a pub and you meet someone you just go up to the machine you both put your hands on some kind of plate and it does a little sample or something and this is you are STD clear <laughs> and then you go right we can go and and we know that we're both we haven't got anything. I think that would be cool. That would be great if there was like um like some sort of <laughs> like in uh, <laughs> like in sci fi like in TCT yeah. like a, like the traitor tester but yeah like it, the traitor it, tester. It, it it tests you for STDs instead. you just need a, like a breathalyzer but for your knob Beep, STD <laughs> detected oh about the clamp a breathalyzer for your knob yeah yes <laughs> here's another email horrible first date robbed and accused of being a drug dealer good lord oh holy god. crap this is that's how uh, funnily enough that's how most of my dates go <laughs> this is from jordan um uh my horrible and unbelievably unlucky first date story third year of university in shottingham i don't know where that is i matched a nice super attractive girl on tinder and we hit it off via message asked her to go for a drink she accepted we met at a bar in town two drinks later things are going smoothly so we went to another bar and here's where things go downhill we sat in a booth next to the window when three rowdy youths start banging on the window trying to get her and our attention i suggest we ignore them which we do in the hope they'll leave which seemed to work it didn't we get up to order a drink leaving our stuff at the table and as we're at the bar the lads run in and steal her bag not reacting quickly enough, and honestly a bit scared of getting stabbed, I didn't chase after them, but we called the police. Another bloke, much braver than me, did chase him down and retrieve the bag. Oh, no. Which is a big, that's that's getting cuckolded on a date, my brother. And retrieve the bag, crisis averted, right? No. And then she went off with we him. We go to another bar, and a guy who was twice my size is playing on a fruit machine next to us. He starts grumbling, then throws a drink menu at us, before spitting in my direction and shouting something unintelligible. At which point, we, we move away to the other side of the bar and warn the barman. Weirded out, but undeterred, we have a nice chat that eventually touches on past relationships, at which point she starts crying. Inexplicably, she chooses this moment to kiss me, a bit weird, but I'm not complaining. We, <laughs> we head home separately, and the next day she's she, going so bad. Know, the next day she texts to say that while she quite likes me, she thought about all the weird stuff that happened on our date and have consulted her stepdad, She's concluded that I must be a drug dealer. Otherwise, why all the beef with the locals? I had right. and still have no idea why any of this happened, but I was gutted not to see her again. That is a terrible date. That, that's bizarre, the whole thing. Okay, I can understand the karma, like the, the, the idea of fate. Like someone is all spiritual or whatever, and they're like, well, you know, you're obviously got bad juju. Uh, you got bad vibes. I get it, right? Like, uh, but the drug dealer thing assumption, like, surely people are friends with drug dealers. You know, they like want to keep on their good side. They're scary guys, right? They want you want to get drugs from them. Like, I don't know. Like, I why would do, does everyone know the local drug dealer and do they have a bad rep and no, get like spat? The, the stepdad thinks he's streetwise and can spot this guy. Oh no, no, I tell you what it is, love. He's, he's a, no good for yeah, you. Yeah, he's a drug dealer. He's a drug dealer. Yeah, tr no, oh, trust I know me. about these. Trust ladies. me. But he's not streetwise. <laughs> he's an idiot. A lot of people think they're really clever because they assume something and they assume it's true and they then credit pat themselves on the back for some brilliant piece of um, you know detective work but actually they're just completely fucking wrong this guy's this is this guy's not a drug dealer we just got unlucky maybe you could have just said fucking hell maybe avoid going to those pubs go to some some nicer pubs the first pub sounded fine stay there i don't understand constantly moving around if i find a pub that's good why move why go mm. to a new pub well you got to go in you got to find a seat again it might be shit Got to order a drink. Just fucking chill where you are. It's not about the location. It's about who you're with, anyway. Yeah, I don't that, know. It's kind of nice to move around a little bit too, though. Yeah. It's like a good excuse to get out and have a little stretch. Maybe like uh, you know, gently puke uh, down an alleyway on the way to the next one. Uh, I'm a, I'm have, a sit tight could, guy. You could have a smoke or whatever. I don't mind. I don't mind moving. I like to. I like to sit tight for a bit, though. Like I don't. I don't want to just have one and then go. But like you know, maybe I, like two, two or three, and then on to the on to an, another one. I'd Be say right. my my approach to pubs is more like the French pre World War Two Maginot Line style defense, where you just sit in place. 
Right. Yours is more of the highly you hunker mobile, down. highly mobile Wehrmacht. I like approach. to. I like to blitzkrieg. Uh, yeah, you're more of a a bar krieger when I'm, dr- <laughs> when I'm drinking. I, yeah, I feel like there's um this thing with bars sometimes where they have this very shitty chic thing going on where they have all mismatched furniture, a load of different frames of things like haphazardly on the walls. Yeah. They've got like old rusty, so old fucking rusty weighing machine or piano or hooker or <laughs> yeah. something weird. You know what it's I mean? all like, just old uh, garbage that they've accumulated. Yeah. Uh, and they and try to make all... it look like it's like cool and trendy, but it's actually yeah, just trash. Exactly. And they're too cheap to buy But with soft lighting, stuff, uh, exactly. It, it, uh, but they, they seem to be over, you know, they'll, they will be, it'll have really expensive cocktails there. Do you know what I mean? 20 yeah. quid for a cocktail. Yeah. And I think those places you can sit in for like a drink, but you wouldn't want to spend the whole night there. That's yeah, but that like wouldn't a, be your choice then. I mean, if you've chosen a bad pub for the date, then fair enough, you'd want to No, move. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's quirky and weird and interesting, right? I like, don't want to see shit hanging on the walls. I hate that. I really hate that. Especially if right. it's like, what is that there for? Like, there's a bit of an old engine and some kind or like, just just something that's just, just um like Americana hanging on the walls. Yeah. Like you get in like a TGI fucking Fridays or something where they're like, Ooh, you're in America. Another thing that bugs me is when you go to somewhere like outside London, uh, like Bournemouth does this a lot, and there'll be bars with names that imply that you're in London. Yeah. Like there, there's a bar that I know called the Camden House or something like that. And you uh-huh. go in and it's just like a bog standard bar. But I think, first of all, have you ever even been to fucking Camden? It's a dump. I like Camden, but it is a dump. And this isn't, yeah. there are no bars in Camden like this. Like, wh- why have you called it the Camden? Try to add some kind of. Oh, it's like, you know, oh, it's yeah. a bit like, you know, Camden. How many people from Bournemouth that go into this pub have ever been to Camden? It just, they just recognize the name and it has some kind of romantic allure. Where's the drug dealers? Where's the dead people? Where's the crack addicts? Where's the shit? Because yeah. that's Camden right there, buddy. Let me tell you. World End, World's End Bar, anyone know that? The worst toilet in the world. They're trying to give you a slice of Camden without all of the uh, extra <laughs> toppings. I don't know which part of Camden it's a slice of, but... It must well, be a niche part of Camden. Yeah. I don't know. I'd still go, though. Like, sounds all right. Sounds okay. Yeah, it's not. Here's one from Scott. Uh, Hi, Triforce team. I do like to think of this as a team. That's good. I'll keep this yeah. short and to the point. He then goes on for about five paragraphs. Back when I was 20, I was using the dating apps big time and have regular dates big time. Okay. <laughs> big time. Wow. Lots okay. of big time. <laughs> No, uh, no fucking around here. Dates, yeah. Double big time. <laughs> Double big time. I've had a few bad dates from dating apps, but don't let that affect you, Lewis, as I met my current girlfriend through Bumble. To the story! I'd organized a date with a girl to go to a bar nearby to my flat. We agreed to meet at the subway station at 8. I arrive for 8, wait for 10 minutes, and she's not there. A couple of minutes later, she texts me saying she's going to be another 30 minutes late. Okay. What? Annoying, but no problem. Only men think like this. I'll go back to my flat and come out getting closer to 9. She doesn't arrive till 9.20. She's an hour and 20 late. We're off to a bad start, but maybe the date will be good. The first thing I notice is a medical mask on her chin. This is pre-COVID, but I was in Korea, so this is kind of normal. We get to the bar, and the date starts, and all the conversations regarding how she doesn't want to go to her friend's hen party, but was talking a bit odd. When I did manage to get a word in to ask the mask still around her chin, it turns out she had Botox injected into her chin near hours before the date. (laughs) Another hour of of bad chat and complaints continue where she complained about the area I lived, the bar we were at, everything else under the sun. I decided to leave, pay the tab at the bar and make up some excuse about uni work. After I leave, she sends me a message 20 minutes later asking to come to my flat, an invite I declined. Anyway, long story short, I guess that this shows that's what an awful date for you is maybe a good date for them. That's a... A reasonable point, Scott, but that that was just a shit date, mate. Uh, it just felt like that it does went- sound that's like a true, fairly though. Maybe shit she date. thought, maybe she was really enjoying like venting all of her, getting yeah. all of her aggressions out, and uh, felt like you were a great shoulder to cry on, Scott. I mean, Scott, I'll be honest with you, fair play for not having her up. I'm interested in the I'm interested in the follow up text after the fact, saying, "Can I come to your flat?" I'm more interested it's, in the rejection. It's of a that. bit of a weird one, isn't it? It's like, maybe her chin had gone down by then a bit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She maybe she wanted to just have a lie down because the Botox was giving her a headache or something. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe she had got like another problem she needed to just vent oh, to yeah. him about for another hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And another thing. <laughs> <laughs> you let her in and it's like, oh, more of this. Like, all right, fine, you can leave now. Jesus. Um, that's a bad one, dude. I feel like there's a lot of this. Because you can't you can't know what someone's gonna be like. No, and- but equally, do you think that there's somebody out there who will 
think that that was a good There's date. someone out there who would love to listen to that. If she rant. if she's if she's consistently always like that, is there somebody out there that is willing to put up with it? Well, you got to imagine there's all these podcast listeners to this podcast listen to us rant about garbage shit day in day out. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. maybe like one of our listeners would be the perfect person for her. You never know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. This but is from uh, this is from another Lewis. Um, this is, oh, good. this might be from me. You got some competition. One of the first dates I went on with my ex girlfriend was for a drink to the student union of our uni back in 2019. Okay. Till this point, we'd only ever really spoken over text or hooked up after meeting on Bumble. That night, we met up and walked into the main bar of the student union and ordered a couple of drinks. Had a pint of lager, she had a white wine. After some good convo, some time passes, we finish our drinks. All of a sudden, the mood changes and a worried expression appears on her face. I ask what's wrong and she explains that the woman sitting across from us at another table slept with her ex-boyfriend while she was still dating him. I tried to reassure her and let her know that if she wanted to leave, we could go somewhere else. This is where things get spicy. She tells me that she's fine and wants to stay. I ask if she's sure. She says, yeah. I turn my back for five seconds to order two more drinks, and like magic, when I turn around, both women are nowhere to be seen. Naturally, I sit down and look at my phone while sipping on my drink. Suddenly, my ex comes rushing back to the main bar with tears in her eyes, being tailed by a burly Scottish female bouncer. The bouncer exclaimed in shock, Miss, did you just slap that girl? I am like, what the fuck is going on? This girl is crazy. She was banned from the union on the spot, and I walked her out. She starts full on crying at this point. I ask her like an idiot, why did you do that? You can't just go around slapping people. To which she told me to fuck off and ran away. Later, I met her best friend looking for her, which put my mind at ease, um, as it meant I could abandon all responsibility and walk home. <laughs> Later that night, she messaged me saying she wanted to see me, but I was well and truly spooked, so I just ghosted her. All of my friends had told me not to go out with her, as the first time we'd hooked up, she'd muttered under her breath that she loved me. Right. The worst part is that a few months later during the winter, she messaged me again, and my lonely frozen ass went crawling back for more. A year of dating later and we broke up after a heated argument. I was incredibly relieved as this is what I'd wanted for a while, uh, but basically couldn't put it into words. The lesson I learned is do not let lust cloud your judgment and take red flags seriously. Very, very wise advice, Lewis. Good, Ooh. good, wise advice. Yeah. Oh, that is wise advice. Yeah. 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 Lewis, I hope you're paying attention to this wise advice. Well, I've got a list of red flags. Right. I was saying to Pyrian earlier, like... I told you. I told you someone on the podcast were like having having a camper van, or at least like not being grown up enough to still basically they're still basically being on their still on their gap year. And I don't mind like a couple doing like a a a, a gap year type holiday before they get married or something like that. That's fine, if, especially if they didn't do it when they were you know out of, out of, fresh out of uni or just about to go to uni or whatever. But I feel like some some people are still on their gap year. They've never stopped. They're all they're just or they're or they're like clearly a party person. Who is clubbing all the time, right? Or all the contoured makeup? That's one. I, I know I have a lot of red flags, um, actually, but I'm slowly learning more and more. <laughs> I guess they're not red, red flags. I mean, they're like they're more like orange flags, I guess. I, suppose, um, I, I think I, I don't know if I'd be good at detecting red flags from from profiles because I, I don't know how much I can really believe profiles on on those dating sites. Like whenever I've seen them, they're either very vague or they seem to be trying to do like the mass appeal. Of like a big brand advertising campaign, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Coca Cola isn't narrowing it down and being like, "We don't like Chinese people." You know what I mean? They're just saying, right. "We want, we love everybody." That's their message. <laughs> I see. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying there is a lot of that. Some people do really narrow it down though, and are obsessed with one thing. Right, but um... I think too many of them are just as broad as a big corporation. Like McDonald's never really steps out of line and says. Here's what we believe. They're just like, please buy our burgers. Yeah. Here are the burgers. Like Would they try to keep it more right, right, right. if they told you what they believed? Yeah, because I'd be like, okay, I can make an informed decision. Because I can tell you pretty much what they believe if you want to, uh, if you if you need to know. What McDonald's? Yeah. Well, I, I'd love to hear this. Go ahead. They just want money no matter what. They, it doesn't doesn't matter how they they don't care who they dupe or take advantage of to get it. They're getting the money. Maybe that should just be their 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 slogan. <laughs> Show, give us your <laughs> money. transparency. We don't give a shit about anything except for lots of money. Um, so take it all with a with a pinch of salt. You know, it's it's weird that people. It's it's weird that they do it in the first place. Pretend to care about stuff, but then it's even weirder when people believe them. Right? Like I know yeah. somebody who is very uh, against 
everything. It, it, it <laughs> you know, you know these people that are just everything is some big conspiracy, or there's there's uh, everything is is designed to keep uh, like a, a certain class of people down or whatever. Mm. All this, but loves Amazon, <laughs> like <laughs> right. will defend it to death loves amazon like it's just i i don't understand like i i don't understand how you can have all of these big um you know uh qualms and 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 takes and stuff and then defend just another shitty company really like i, I mean Do they yeah, make money from amazon or, like that reselling or whatever yeah I, I mean it's you know it's convenient or or, or whatever but like man they're, they're they're no better than than any no, no, other course, yeah. large corporation, but I mean they're they're objectively terrible to their staff as well. Like yeah, really absolutely, staff, absolutely. Yeah. But this person does not see it. But I, uh, I don't know. It's it's odd, right? Choosing yeah, choosing what to be uh, in, enraged by, and then just having such a double standard with uh, yeah. the stuff that you that you like. It's weird. I'm loving it. I think I'm my my red too. flags would be things. When I got to know someone a little better, I would say, number one, if they were religious, that's a huge red flag for me. I wouldn't really want anything to do with anyone that was religious. I just wouldn't trust that we would ever really see eye to eye on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and my assumptions about them, the things that they would probably believe in, the, thing, the things that they would support would be at odds with the things that I believe in and support. So I would be very, very reluctant. I, I've known a lot of religious people in my life. My, and, my thing with religion, and maybe this is, uh, maybe this is not not um a, a a true thing or whatever but i always feel like religious people I, I i feel like i get along with somebody who is religious and i would tolerate you know their 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 beliefs or, or whatever i wouldn't mind so much but i always feel that their that their their past like their childhood and stuff is monumentally fucked up and therefore yeah. will fuck them up in the future so yeah thing, you know I, what I, mean? I think a lot of people turn to this is this is not people who were born and raised in a religion, but people that turned to it almost universally. The yeah. people I know who have been born again and all this kind of stuff have had a terrible fucking life, and this is their therapy. Yeah, and I fully respect that. If that's helping you, absolutely go for it. But I don't want anything to do with it because they tend to be the most evangelizing. It's like it's like it's like someone who's on a on some fitness regime. And never shuts up about it, and wants you to be on the same fitness regime. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That defines their entire really, they personality. They call that it's the 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 zeal of the recently converted, right? Exactly. It's people it's who like just that. discovered something that won't fucking shut up about it, right? Yeah. They're so and they excited. think I'm going to hell, and I'm a, I'm a yeah. sinner. It's like I, I don't like to be judged like that. This so. is a pretty unusual one. I mean, I think it's more you more likely to see people who say things like that. They don't have any filter. Do you know what I mean? Or, or they're rude to like servers or whatever. Right. Do you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or I hate that as well. But that yeah. would be the kind of thing you'd notice. Like if we were out and about, I remember there was a, a girl I knew. I never dated her. I was married at the time, but she was always incredibly rude to cab drivers. All right. Like right off the bat, you get in the cab and you just start having a go at them. Really? I was like, yeah. I was like, this is so weird. Huge red that flag. That is weird. For me. Yeah. Um, just because that's such a weird personality trait to have is that we get in a cab and she's just literally almost getting us kicked out of the cab. Within five minutes of being well, in the did, cab. And was she the type of person that sort of wore it as a badge of honor as well? No, she just didn't give a fuck. She, oh, she just did, really just yeah. didn't this give goes, a shit. This also goes hand in hand with people like shitting on something you like. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you, you know, you say, oh, I'm, I'm into uh, war games. And they're like, war games are for nerds. Do you know what I yeah. mean? That, <laughs> they are. That, has, that has happened to yeah, me. It kind of can it, work no, it's, both it's, ways. It's almost though, like, like a direct insult, you know, yeah. right to your face. Mm. You know, someone who's willing to do that. Um, I don't. I don't know. It's it's very. It's like it's a very. It's, it's a, it goes hand in hand with that, right? Like that kind of lack of awareness or like. But but if you've got someone, I think that actually to me shows more that they're just not interested in you. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like. Uh, or, or, or do you, do you know what I mean? Because I think if someone is interested in you, they're going to be trying to be nice to you, right? Yeah. Um. Or from both sides as well. I think you should. You shouldn't take any shit from. Like if you're a girl and guys are like taking the piss out of things you do, of course you shouldn't. You shouldn't take that for a second. That, like anyone who belittles you or makes you feel less than you are, you should get out of there because yeah. that isn't. You know, either they're playing some fucking alpha Chad seduction <laughs> move on you where they're trying to neg you or whatever, or they're just a dick. There's the, then they're both bad, right? Yeah. Um. 
So, but then doesn't that mean that me saying that I don't want anything to do with dating a religious person, isn't that me judging them? Yes. Well, yeah, but so therefore, therefore you should get out of that. But thing the thing is, I, I would never... But you're, up, you're up front about it, whereas... Uh, no, but I people wouldn't berate could be up, them about it. No, no, but just people be, could be upfront about this stuff as well. If you're looking for somebody, you could just kind of say, I don't want somebody who plays a lot of video games or it plays, you know, with miniatures and stuff. No and stuff nerds. Like no nerds, But that's yeah. what the first date is for, right? Because then you can squirrel that away and be like, yeah, all right. Well, I, I, I'll just have a nice chat with this person. Yeah. And I won't. I'll, I'll say thanks. I won't see you again. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, think that's fine to do because you never. That's you never got to get a real picture of people until you meet them. Um, True. I'd say also anything to do with crystals and spirituality and home homeopathy and everything. I'm out. Like I'm out immediately. That yeah. that is just a huge no no yeah. for me. All of that. <laughs> I don't stuff. know though. They, I I think I think for a lot of this stuff though, even the religious stuff to an extent. I mean. It it's not it's not that consequential. I don't think. I think I think for all <laughs> I think this it is long term, dude. I don't know. I think for all this stuff, there's 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 definitely if it, if it turns into a relationship or goes anywhere, there's there's probably some compromise needed along the way. But I still think that you can be a perfectly nice, lovable person and and just you know have beliefs or or whatever that may not fit in with with somebody else or whatever i i think you'd be surprised i think you'd probably be compatible with somebody that you know did these right, things me, that, that you, you don't question. like or whatever and you you would probably find that most people i'm not saying everyone but most people aren't insane with it so let me ask you a question i'm not talking about someone who is who was brought up <clears throat> Catholic or whatever and just wears a cross around their neck and mm -hmm. I don't care about that. I'm talking about someone no, who fine. is properly religious. Sure. All right? or, or or like they use religion or something spiritual. Like they say, oh, I'm a Scorpio. That's why I do this. Yeah. Do you know I mean? Fuck that as well. Do you see what I mean? Like they, they use it as an excuse for their shitty right. actions or behavior. But here's sure, the right? thing. Let's say I'm in a long-term relationship with someone who is a pretty committed Christian, goes to church. They're fine with me not going. That in itself is a red flag, I would suggest. Them, them trying to convert me would be annoying. Them not trying to convert me and just saying, yeah, each would their be own, annoying as it's well. It's like, so you're condemning me to hell. Like, you're literally <laughs> happy for me to burn for all eternity. That's what you believe. Yeah. I haven't turned to Jesus Christ and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Ergo, I am doomed. And you're like, let's spend the rest of our lives together. By the way, when the rapture comes, I'm leaving. Like, that's even worse, I would suggest. Yeah. You're not even trying to save me. So it's a, it's a lose-lose situation. I'm either going to be preached to for our entire relationship, or I'm damned. So yeah. fuck it. I mean, I, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that you should you should go out of your way to find somebody who's completely contrary to your, to yourself or whatever but i think that i think that people tend to get hung up on a lot of this stuff and a lot of it doesn't matter you know there's there, of course there's specific situations where yeah of course it's a deal breaker it's a huge red flag or whatever but i think i think people build some of this stuff up to be a way bigger deal than it than it actually is like like the 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 impact of it you know, like somebody believing in crystals or whatever, it's it, it's not going to come up all the time, is it? Like it'll come up once in a while, and you could probably just be like, oh, whatever, I I, I don't like that, but if you like it, whatever. I'm glad you have something you like. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. a, not a huge deal. Religion's a little bit different, I guess, but even then, there's degrees of it. I feel like anyway. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. If someone says that to me, I'm I'm going to instantly assume it's a joke. I just think right? it would be a shame to lose somebody who is potentially really so, somebody that you could really either hit it off with or even just be really good friends with you know you might have some things in common but then obviously there's things you you don't have in common but to just dismiss sure. somebody at face value because of these one or two things i, I don't think is right i i think if it depends if you're approaching it just from a very casual perspective but if you're approaching the if i'm going on dates especially if i was my age now and i'm yeah. meeting someone yeah uh, I, I would be looking for something longer term. That is going to be a problem, and I, I, in a way, I think a lot of this it reluctance, could be a, like a longer term problem. But you could still have a couple of fun dates. You know, you might. Right, but it that, might but be that's, fun. That's, for that's like casual. A few. Yeah. I but suppose. what I'm saying is, imagine if I fell for this person. Yeah. But this this was a, this would be an issue in our lives, like that would actually potentially mean that I fall for this person, and then it's all fucked fucked up. Yeah. I think a lot of the time people people want to avoid these things because they're like, I could see this going south. I don't want to get attached to someone yeah. who I see no future with. Because what if we do end up falling in love and then this becomes an issue in two, two three years time. Yeah. I've wasted two or three years and I've got the heartbreak and all the rest of it. Yeah. So I think a lot of people like, I want it to be 
a good outlet, like a, a good good setting at the outset, so that it could build into something. Yeah, I suppose. rather than say, "Oh, I can put up with that for now." It's like, but can you for the rest of your life put up with every morning? Good morning. Have you prayed? It's yeah. like, no, I fucking yeah. haven't prayed for the millionth time. Anyway, but but if every but if everybody's got it so sewn up and 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 everything, you know, knowing what to avoid and finding the the perfect person or whatever. Like, there's a lot of people who can't find Where's somebody. The fun? But then there, there's <laughs> fucking tons of people who get together and then divorce, like, in a couple of years or whatever as well. Separation divorce rates are higher than they've ever been. So nobody, yeah, fucking, nobody fucking knows what they're actually doing. I'm not saying they do. Despite everybody claiming to be some fucking genius at avoiding all of the red flags and pitfalls and stuff, people still fall for them all the fucking time. I got a couple of things to say on this. So we've mentioned Bumble a couple of times. I've been on Bumble, you know, my pictures are just mainstream pictures. I think I look pretty nice. I've not had a single reply on Bumble, like, or, or a single hit on Bumble the whole really? time. Really? Like, so like, nobody's like even looked at you once? Not a single message from anyone. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sorry had... for laughing, but like, it's not, <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's just, it, the whole thing is so fucking absurd. Like, it's that. hard. It's hard. It's, it's actually really hard yeah, for men yeah. on dating sites. Yeah. So if you're struggling, I feel fucking sorry for you, dude. And, some of the dates I've been on have been pretty miserable and awful, so it's tough, right? Yeah. But um, I've also had some some good good outcomes. I was I was on a date the other day. All the dates I've had have been through Hinge, by the way. I was on a date the other day, and we were in this place. Uh, she she recommended it. It was like a restaurant, and um, so the the waitress comes over who she knows, and it's like, oh, another date. Oh no! And, <laughs> and, oh and no! And she was like. She was like, she went a bit red, but she was like, "Oh yeah, I, I, I brought loads of people here." <laughs> I started laughing, and I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" So I looked at the waitress, and I was like, um, "How do I compare to the usual?" And she was like, "It's like a joke." And the waitress was like, "Eh." <laughs> And I was just like, oh man, I, oh, I actually loved it. It was actually really bad. That, is, that, fucking that funny. is funny, yeah. Jesus Christ. I've got an email I have to read here, okay? Um, I'm not going to give a name and I'm not going to give any details, but I am going to read this email and you'll, you'll know why in a second. I, I, I want to read this. You'll, you'll see. I, hi, I'm a 36-year-old who would like to date Lewis. I oh. think we might be a good match. Jesus. I'm a gamer and board game lover, vegetarian slash vegan wannabe, like to travel, and I think he looks super nice with a nice personality. I know this is stupid, but I have to give it a chance. Okay. She sent a picture. <laughs> She's very attractive. <laughs> she has then followed up with an email six hours later. Hi, please ignore my last message. <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> she must listen to the podcast. <laughs> oh no. Oh fuck I, me. I had to read it. Oh, I'm that sorry. Is so fucking oh, funny. Like, oh, that's that's so name so like fucking that, brutal, but I love dude. that so much. Oh, oh my god. Fuck, that's funny. She oh, gave me six no. hours. I'm so sorry, dude. She sent this overnight. Like this was oh, last night at about eleven o'clock. And then that's funny. <laughs> at six a.m. She, she's like, she must no. have said to like she was know. she was a little tipsy apparently when she said yeah, that. Yeah, oh, fair enough. And immediately regretted. Fair yeah, enough. she woke well, up. Or got to a certain um, stage of drunkenness, it was like, what am I thinking? Oh, so, shit, that's well, funny. I'm not really keyed on dating people who know me through really seek what they you see out. on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not the real me. I'm not actually like this. I'm not. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not. You're not. <laughs> he is. I can not. attest. <laughs> he <laughs> is not like this. He I've is. got a gun against my head. <laughs> I'm. I'm much more. Um. I'm much more boring in real life. No, and he's, he's know, exactly it's, it's, the same. It sets unrealistic expectations. Expectations you are pretty much the same as that's very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't think that's a compliment, bud. Oh uh, no, I, I know think I it do. is. I think it I think I think here uh, I mean we've well we've done this podcast for seven years. I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't turn up every every week if I didn't like you guys. Like no, I'm glad that you not. guys are yourselves and that you act But we're not dating each other. Yourselves. I, I never feel like you're putting on a show or anything like that. I feel like, you know, we're all pretty Pretty, I think we, we average, are who we are. Transparent people. Yeah. Yeah. We are who we are. And I think, I mean, we're talking for over an hour. There's no way you could 
pretend to be someone else like that. Like, no. You know, we're, we're all who we are. Fucking hell. Fuck me, that's that so, email is so funny. So, I know. That's that's so funny. <laughs> that's so good. I had to read it. Even though it was requested that I ignore it, I had oh, to read it. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Oh, my God. I'm d that cuts me so deep. <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't know. It's, it, despite all the rejection you constantly get on these apps, it's horrible, man. Oh, it's like I so, know. I know. It's so tough as you, a look, man. You know, I listen, feel so sorry for pe other people who are doing this. Listen, well, you, you know guys. that we laugh at, at uh, things like that and everything, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think I speak for both of us here, me and Sips, that we're very supportive and we want the best for you in these dates and things. Oh, and yeah. when you told us you'd been on a date, we're very excited. When yeah, it's going yeah, well, yeah. we're very happy for yeah. you. And I want everyone to know that even though we're teasing Lewis and joking around, of course we want the absolute best for him. Yeah. And there's, there's no doubt that when he gives us a good story, we're just as happy as we are when he gives us a bad one because we enjoy listening. It's a chance to vent. It's funny, mm -hmm. but we're not judging him. We're not being mean. Well, so this please. is exactly what I wanted from this as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I... Hopefully you find our advice helpful. And, uh, I want to have an interesting <laughs> life where interesting shit happens. I hope happens. that like, you think about us when you're on your dates as well. <laughs> I love to think about that. I've, what would Pyrian do? Sips and Pyrian are going to love this. <laughs> I genuinely think that if you have something really embarrassing and awkward happen to you, like what I told you about in the last mailbag, um, you, you could either keep that inside and feel bad and awkward and embarrassed about it, or you could just fucking... Let it Tell out. everyone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And laugh about yeah. it and make it into a fun. And it's not always the case, but mostly the case that you can, that a problem shared is a problem, a problem changed. A problem into, enjoyed. A problem enjoyed, yeah. Changed Prob into laughing. A problem right. enjoyed. Here's one from Doctor. Uh, tr the, the, t the subject line is Triforce Bad Date Story, brackets gay man. Right. Uh, hey, lads, 20 year old Londoner here, long time listener, first time, mailbagger. Decided to try dating for the first time after getting over the mail, end of, mail, yeah, mail bagger. Mail bagger. Horrible. Yeah. It, it also doesn't sound like it's his first time because he's brackets gay man, so he might have been mail bagging quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Decided to try be. dating for the first time after getting over the end of a long term relationship. At Got a 20? message from a guy. Yeah. Holy fuck. A 19 year old bloke on Hinge saying he loved one of the outfits I was wearing and thought I was pretty cute. Long story short, we have a few things in common. Decided to meet up at Costa, get to know each other, and then head to the pub. Good taste. While at the pub, he said, by the way, I'm a massive furry, and proceeded to show me pics of him and his friends at a meet in Manchester. Right. I thought this was pretty cool at first because I'd never met a furry before and had a lot of questions. After a few of my questions, he then went on to say, I commission a lot of furry porn, actually. I can show you a few if you want. I laughed because I thought he was joking, but lo and behold, he pulled up some pictures of two dog guys going at it reverse <laughs> cowboy style. Wow. Later on, he kept trying to get me to play some kind of platform or on his phone and repeatedly compared me to his ex um, because they were both really into history and hoi four. <laughs> Never decided okay. to go on a second date and stop talking to him after he sent me some more commissions over Discord. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. No, that's a big, big lot of, lot of flags there Man. of varying colors. Yeah. Only, only 19 as to well. each their own, I and suppose. A, but um, Wow, he's really like, you know, dive deep into that world, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Brave. God, what was I doing at 19? Not that. No, That's not that. Sure. I was, what the heck? I was, I'm trying to think. what At uni. I was dating Mrs. F at 19. I was over here, actually, yeah. when I was 19. 19 going on 20. I was over here on a, like a gap year, pretty much, as a holiday maker. I was in Jersey. Wait, right. Jersey? Yeah. Before I, uh, be between finishing high school and then going to college, I came here for a year. Worked. I worked at Blockbuster Video. It was, it was, <laughs> it was a time. And then did she, did she spend a year with you in Canada? Yes, she came well to after Canada that. after as well. That's yeah. so good. She came, she, she lived in Canada during my second year of school, I think. No, it was like, it was like halfway through my first year and then cutting into the, into the second. We had so much fun that I failed a bunch of classes and I had to do an extra half a year of college. Oh, no. I know. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, we did have fun, but I skipped a lot of my uh, lectures. Same was, exact thing. And at the end of the first year, we had to go back to Plymouth and do retakes yeah. for like two oh, weeks no. in the summer. Yeah. Um, and we stayed with a friend Mrs. F had made in Plymouth, uh, uh, Jana, who's still a friend of ours. And uh, we lived in her council flat on a really shitty estate for two weeks. It was fucking awful. Mm. Um, and had to go in every day and do retakes and resits and lectures and and I regretted not attending anything near as not, as many lectures as I should have in the first year, but immediately repeated it all in the second year. Yeah. Um, lived even closer to the university. It was about a four minute walk. And I still skipped half the, at least half the fucking lectures, oh, which man. is dog shit. Yeah. This was before this you could just get it all online as well. You actually had but to. But this is what you're supposed to, well, that's not what you're supposed to do, is it? But, you know, I think a lot of people get 
suddenly freedom, right? University or college is like the sudden I've, I'm living on my own. I can do whatever I want. I can see whoever I want as much as I want kind of thing. Yeah. For me, it was just playing uh, MMOs <laughs> <laughs> mostly. Well, a good thing you did. I mean, it did lead to something. Well, yeah. And I didn't hate it. I didn't, I didn't hate it. Um, man, these are some, it, these are some fascinating fucking yeah. chats we've had this week. I'm really enjoying this. All right, this is from uh, Haley. In my early 20s, I went on a date to a relatively nice place with a bloke of a similar age. He ordered chicken nuggets and chips off the children's menu, then sulked for the rest of the evening when he was told they didn't have any nuggets left. Had a margarita <laughs> pizza, chips, and a lot of ketchup instead. We dated for two years, never what? saw him eat a single vegetable. Middle-aged me wonders how it got past that date, let alone two years deep. That is bizarre. Never... First of all, ordering the children's menu in a restaurant and then having pizza and chips? What is he in school? This is like a school dinner. That's a big red flag. Oh, me. man, that's not def That's I eat that like every day. <laughs> yeah, that's Sips' margarita. See, I, mean, I think this is actually Sips because the margarita pizza and chips. Oh, my God. And, if you, and sulking if he doesn't get yeah. it is so, so common. Absolutely. Um, I, get, I get hangry me and, for, for my pizza and chips. I think I am a fucking bad red flag on the food front as well, because obviously... If they're not a vegan, a, fuck yeah. Being a vegan puts a lot of people off, I think. A lot of people are still are worried about that, because they think I'm puny, or I'm like... Which I am, which is fair. But um, or, or that I'm also, like, annoying. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it, it is it is a it is like saying it's not like saying I'm a feminist or something, but it, it's almost like saying that. You know, it's like it's not a good thing. <laughs> you know, mostly. you're annoying. Like a feminist. I'm an annoying. Is that what you're I'm saying? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if someone tells me they're a feminist, I'm like, okay, Instantly I don't mind that you're a feminist, but I didn't but you telling me is like quite annoying. I think um, if you let things like veganism or dare I say it, feminism define your entire personality, then it's like saying like it's just as bad to me as saying, "Oh, I'm a I'm a war gamer," and that's all we can ever talk about. Yeah, see what I mean? It's like th this this everything comes back to Warhammer. It's like yeah. hanging out with Ben and Tom basically all the time. Yeah, which which on a date in dating terms, I I would be I would be delighted to date either Ben or Tom because I know them. Other than their war game. Yeah. I feel like that would be a red flag. Imagine there, right? those Warhammer streams, right? The Warhammer yeah. streams, that's all they can talk about. Like if you to, put, if that's if you put Warhammer on your dating profile, yeah, it, even if you're bad. like the world champion, you're in trouble. Right. Um But if, if that's I, I, if that defines your entire personality, whatever it is. That's going to be boring. But I think it's. I think I am annoying being because I'm allergic to nuts. I'm allergic to a few other things. I I'm, I'm trying not to eat certain types of types of like certain things, and it, it's a pain going to a restaurant with me. Do you know what I mean? It is. I am, it is a terrible. It is a really annoying for everyone involved. I don't um, find that you're awkward with it though. We've been. I've been out with you before, and like you, right, you just but you're say you're a vegetarian. Yeah, sure, but like even with like nut allergies and stuff, you're. I I, I think that you're pretty laid back with it all. You know, you're just kind of. You just well, kind of say to them, to "Oh, it. can you just make sure there's no nuts in that, or yeah, I yeah, will yeah. die." Like it's not. Yeah. I don't think I mean, that, that's, that, that's not a problem. Yeah, at all. but you know, but, but, like, but it does limit the places we can go. You don't, you don't make like a big song and dance about it, though. You're just, you're just well, a bit like matter of fact about it. And it's I fine. was talking to someone who also had some other allergies. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then they were like, w "Imagine we're in a restaurant, and I have to explain all of my allergies. You have to explain all of your allergies. Yeah. Well, we just like the fucking most Karen couple ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, it is pretty crazy." How yeah. many allergies people have these days? I think it feels like more. Yeah, than, than when I, when I was younger. But I think like all that stuff. I don't think you come across um, as kind of um, overbearing with it or or obsessed with with any of it. You know, you just kind of say like, "Oh yeah, I'm a vegan and I have nut allergies." Like you, like I, I've never. I've never been out with you where it's you know it's come across as like weird or or, or awkward or anything. So right, I, but imagine I don't if worry you're on a too date, much about it. Imagine if you're on a date and you love steak. Yeah. And you want to go and get a steak. Uh huh. And you're you're going out with a vegan. Right. That's that is going to be awkward because you're going to be like, I guess we can never go out. This is what happened with us. Remember in Sips when we went to Morton's with you, yeah. and you couldn't even eat the fries because they had bacon on. Do you yeah, know what I mean, well, there was but, literally nothing yeah, for you I, in that whole place. But I just ate some chips in the end anyway. They just gave me some chips. It was you fine. just picked the bacon off. Yeah, and then you go, and then you told them it was my birthday, and we had a birthday cake as well. It was not my <laughs> birthday. Right. Well, because you hadn't eaten they anything, sang at least and the birthday everything. cake was vegan vegetarian. Yeah, <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Yeah, but I, <laughs> that was the only thing that was edible. For yeah, you. but I mean, it's it, you know, like it's 
I, we were just out. I, I didn't care. Like, I, I, I don't care that if I, I eat or not. Know. I'll just grab something when I'm hungry. It doesn't matter. I just want to be out. Uh, you know, like, I was fi- fine to just be with I think the people. people you're with care sometimes that you're having a good time. And, they, and this is what I've run into uh, sometimes. It's like people worried that I'm not going to have a good time with them because I can't eat anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I could just eat a fucking banana. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm cool. I'm cool. But it means it's tricky, really, because I think sometimes... Look, I love it when people just organize stuff. I think it's a very attractive thing. And I think generally other people find this attractive too. When other people are like, oh, we're going, I've booked this thing, or we're going here, or we're doing this. Like, the worst thing is to be, oh, what shall we do? Oh, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's always just so nice if someone has taken the initiative. Yeah. But yeah, like, I like, I, I just totally... like winging it. I like people that are simple and that will just wing it as well. You know, I don't, we don't, I don't they're, need they're, grand they're both, they're both fine. organization and, uh, you know, formal sit downs and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, planning is not romantic. Just some either, chips but... on a wall uh, when you're hungry <laughs> and throw some... I'm good. Right. It's fine. Like, I, I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff personally. No, you're right. And some of the nicest things are the ones that weren't planned or some of the some of the happiest yeah. days of your life were not planned yeah, at all. absolutely yeah like uh like my kids uh yeah oh well <laughs> not planned yeah <laughs> it was very much a surprise <laughs> I just, i'm i'm joking i'm joking i didn't even know she was pregnant <laughs> just, we never even had sex i don't know how this happened but, <laughs> um no it's uh yeah i, I like uh yeah I, I know what you're saying and i i i agree i think that's i think that's a good thing i think if you find somebody who can do those kind of things as well i think well for me personally i think that's great i like that you know People who will just yeah. eat uh, like uh, a bit of bread when they're <laughs> hungry while walking. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you don't have to make like, a big deal about a lot of this stuff. I know some people like to, and if you find somebody that also likes to, great. But um, but there's there, there's always a simpler way to do it. I feel like. All right, here we go. This is uh, this is from Joe. This is how the email starts. This is verbatim. I am indeed a man. Okay. And this story was my first and only date. Right. This took place right at the end of the first lockdown. So I want you to bear in mind this Wait, is Joe's end, end of the first lockdown? Yeah. All right. This is Joe's first and only date. How now, old you, is Joe? Does he say? Doesn't say. But you might get some idea of why it's his first and only date. Right. Given that he then tells us his pickup line that he was using at the time. Started as normal, met a nice girl on Tinder, opened up with my go to pickup line at the time Are you a mask? Because you should be on my face. Right? <laughs> that is Joe's go to pickup line. Good grief. First and only date. Joe. How does Mate. Joe know, know, know what's normal as well? Started off as normal. Uh, this is his first one. Uh, he, what, is, how, what, what the heck does he know about I think it? he's implying well, that that is... He's used that on a lot of women. <laughs> he's tried it on a lot of women. Uh, and it's, it's worked Finally once. stuck. Um, <laughs> but we'll find out why pretty soon. Uh, lo and behold, it worked. We decided to meet up at a bar near her. Uh, came to date night. The bar was had maybe 20 to 30 people in. She was sat at a table with five other blokes. We went to our own table. To keep it brief, the date went fine. She was lovely and interesting, went back to hers, and as he puts it, got busy with the formalities. Right. Anyway, okay. as we awoke the next day, we were talking about the bar the night before. She thought that this would be a good time to mention that by some amazing coincidence, she'd previously been on a date with almost every man that was in that bar at the time and revealed that I was date number 150. Wow. Wow. Sensing, Did he get a balloon? Sensing my awkwardness, she followed up by adding, you're definitely in the top 20. Suffice oh. it to say, that, that compliment did not earn us a second date. Joe, mate, you've been on one date. How picky can you be, brother? Yeah. Well, but no, but he's in the top 20 yeah. of 150. I'd take that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, at least you got you you top twenty. That's you got like top ten percent. You managed to um you you managed to 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 hit a home run on your first date as well, which not a lot of people can say they have done. So uh, yeah, you know, there's at least success at rate. least that. I mean, it, the line has obviously. He said his usual pickup line. So that given that he had one date off that line, yeah, very very low success rate with that no. line. But, and then when but, it finally but, when it did lands, work, it's a home run. It, well, that's no. crazy. Okay, so the way this works is a little bit like the Nigerian prince with the scam emails, right? Right. They are deliberately badly spelled because they want idiots to fall for it, right? It, it prunes out all of the all the time wasters, right? So if you go with a really sexualized first comment, you're going to get rid of anyone 
who's not looking for a one night stand. Oh, right? I see. So, so what he's doing is specifically looking for a, a picker, a mm, hooker, right. by being that sexual in his first comment, right? right. Noted. And that was where you'll get. If sometimes some people are looking for that, you know. If you if you say if you send a first message like, ah, oh, can't wait to spend time on my ranch with my dogs, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Or whatever. I don't know something like where it's like really or like looking forward to our kids' first day at school. I don't know. Again, it's gonna like it's gonna it's gonna have a deterministic effect. Yeah. On who's gonna respond to that? Interesting. Um. Yeah. So yeah, it's a common thing to think about. All right. Um, well, here's one from from Katie. Uh, I thought you fellas might enjoy my bad date story from a woman's perspective. It's a bit of a long story, but it really is the worst date I've ever been on, and that's saying something. Oh boy. Okay. I met a guy off Tinder. First meeting in the city centre. Himself, a middle-aged man, wheeling up to me on a skateboard. A bit quirky, but I can appreciate the efficient transport. We then settled in the pub garden at a Weatherspoons. Oh, these are all bad, bad, bad. After a brief bit of conversation, he pulls out a packet of prawns from his bag, saying he'd like to go back to mine and cook me these prawns. Now, these prawns are so out of date, they were green and fuzzy. I turned down his offer. Jesus. Shortly after, like a mad magician, he pulls out of his bag a selection of crazy knives. He was evidently very proud of his knives and was waving them about with gay abandon in the very busy pub garden. I promptly said this isn't going to work, thanked him for the pint and headed off. The man started to follow me through the pub saying, no, come back. I want to cook you these prawns. Outside of the pub on the busy street, he kept following me on his skateboard in a high octane chase. I, I managed to duck inside another bar where my friends worked, where they gave me a free tequila to calm my nerves. Hope this story can bring you a chuckle that's almost 10 years ago now so I can look back and laugh. This will forever be etched into my memory. God damn. That's Katie. insane. It, that, that sounds terrifying, but also um, a known threat, right? It's yeah. not like. Do you think with some of these, like, sometimes, do you think it, it's people are recording them, like to put it on TikTok or whatever? Because that's weird. Eh? Like a prank. To, yeah, to pull out prawns and have a knife collection and stuff like that just seems really odd. Yeah. That somebody would, would, do, would do all that stuff. I feel like sometimes when when really odd stuff happens, I feel like okay, where's the, where's the camera? Like somebody's recording this, trying to get a reaction or something like that. You know, mm. maybe not ten years ago though, mm. or maybe I don't know. I do, I, the, 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 I don't know. I think the the prankers aren't necessarily on skateboards. Do you know what I mean? No, mm. I don't. <laughs> that to me doesn't gel. <laughs> like. Maybe there'd be a rollerblades. What's the difference? Well, you know, there's a cultural difference between skateboards and rollerblades. <laughs> you know? I guess, ah, but I mean, very, they're very different. Very different. Well, here's a here's a um, email for you. This is a uh, g'day, Tim from Australia here. Uh, it was our second date. She invited me to her place for a nice dinner. Her words. I arrive. Smartly dressed with a fancy dessert. I hope you bought an overnight bag. So, so you you message somebody and you say, "Hey, you want to get together?" And they say, "Yeah, why don't you come over to my house for a nice dinner?" Yeah, that's how that goes. Yeah, that's the yes, second date. She enough. says, "Do you want to come over to my house for a nice dinner?" Sounds great. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly fair how enough. it goes. Yeah, really. I'd say that sounds. I'd be about skeptical. Well. I would be. I would you be would, thinking you would somebody was trying trap. to prank me. <laughs> Put it on TikTok right. or whatever. Someone rolls up on a fucking pair of rollerblades and starts filming <laughs> With you. a bag of prawns. <laughs> so you have a nice dinner, are you? Oh, uh, I arrive nicely dressed with a fancy dessert, prepared for an enjoyable meal, and perhaps a smooch if things go well. Oh, yeah. Turns out dinner is two bottles of wine and some crackers and beetroot dip. She's wearing sweatpants mm. and no deodorant. Over the next hour, oh, she Lord. eats all the dip, drinks an entire bottle of wine, and falls asleep. I ended up <laughs> sleeping on her couch, and in the morning, she doesn't apologize for falling asleep so abruptly but does find time to bring up that her boobs are too small to give a boob job. It was quite random, uh. as we hadn't talked about that at all the night before. I think he uh. means like a tit wank. Yeah, yeah. She even made me watch a <laughs> porno featuring the act as if I didn't know what it was. Needless to say, I left at the first opportunity and never contact her again. Oh, no disrespect, no. maybe she was having a bad week. Well, Tim, that's, that's kind of a date, I guess. I don't know what that is. She made you watch a boob job porno. <laughs> yeah. Made you watch it. Yeah. Right. That's... Good lord. That must be her thing, maybe, but she's saying it can't be her thing. Very strange. We all want what we can't have. <laughs> Indeed. This is a uh, woman reporting on a disastrous date. I watched with Fucking someone hell. on an online dating site that matched with someone on an a online dating site several years back. We chatted for about a week, made arrangements to meet up. First date went fine. Second date, we went back to his place and I spent the night. Next morning, I woke up, went into the living room on my way to the kitchen for a glass of water to find his mother sitting on the couch. Apparently he lived with her and didn't tell me, and I couldn't tell from the room decor or anything 
which was perfectly pleasant, but I was mortified as I'd assumed we were alone in his house. As I was trying to escape back to his bedroom, and consequently escape the entire situation, he came out of the bedroom in his underwear with his mother still sitting there. I was just totally flummoxed over the whole situation. We were both grown adults in our late 20s, and I noped out of there as quick as I could. Worst walk of shame ever. Catherine, that, that does suck. Like, I, I just, I, there's something uh, yeah. about someone's mum being there that's like, ah, oh, shit. How much noise did I make? Like, yeah, that's awkward. Yeah. Mm. Like, that is, because that's what you're constantly second guessing yourself. You're like, oh no, oh no. Okay. What do you reckon his mum said to him after? She seems nice. She she seems nice. Yeah. If they're all like that laid back about it, that's not the first uh, time a rodeo has happened in the in the flat or in the house, right? They're used to. Yeah, this. you'd assume he he's in his late twenties. He probably brings girls back quite often. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, as it, certainly being in his underwear in front of his mum, I guess would seem. I guess he just weird. doesn't say that he lives with his mum because maybe it's off putting. It's a red flag. And then, you know, maybe his mom is just not home that often, but maybe this time she just happened to... She might not have even been home when that was happening. She might have come True. come back after or something, you know? True. Just snuck in. Well, that's it. I'm out of dating stories. Thank God. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holy crap. Anyway. I think I'm I think I'm kind of done with the dating stories for now. It's um so, uh, I'll, I'll, if there are good ones, like really good some ones. Some of them are just too weird, man. Like it just it really highlights the fact that there <sighs> we've, are we've some... learned we've all learned a lot today. I feel um, like the it's prawn like guy especially. peering into other people's dating life. It, yeah. it is a view into what people are like. It's almost like looking in through someone's window. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like it's like having a little peek into into a private world. Because people obviously let their guard down a bit. Yeah. And you get to see what people are really like on a date. So I think it's going to be interesting uh, as Lewis continues his dating escapades and we continue to get emails about them. I'm looking forward to it. I'll read out the good ones right. and Precisely. weed out the rest. Thank you. Thank you um, so much for, for doing that. Yeah. Thanks for the story. We love you and we'll uh, see you next time. See you on the next, next time. mailbag. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.